Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, and today's Friday, and I woke up and I was like, hmm, should I record a song, or should I work on a video for YouTube? And then I was like, I'll just make a video about recording a song. So, that's what I'm going to do today. I have a lot of musical projects in the works, and uh, there's several different things that I want to work on, and though I don't really know what I'm going to do yet today, I figured I would just document the whole process and show you guys kind of how I go about these things. Uh, this may be a really long video. I don't even know if I'll finish it in one day, but uh, I'm going to do my best. So anyway, the first thing I'm going to do, well, the first thing I need to do is kind of decide what direction I want to go uh, with this song. I do want to use a lot of, you know, real instrumentation, guitars, basses, and I'll probably use my Roland uh, TD5 drum module on my electronic kit here for drums. Uh, so I have that part already thought of. And I also just got some new acoustic guitar strings. So maybe I'll put these on my acoustic and maybe I'll start out with that. Maybe do a track on the acoustic guitar and, uh, and then try to take it from there. Uh, but also, before I even do that, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go into my digital audio workstation uh, which I usually either use Reaper or Ableton Live. So I need to decide which one of those I'm going to use first. And then I set up a grid, you know, something to have a click on, decide what the time signature and the tempo is going to be. And then I start working on my first track. So I guess the very first thing I need to do is, well, I can put these strings on, but I don't feel like doing that just yet. So let's go over to my DAW and uh, see what I can do there. First, I need to figure out which one I want to use and you know what the tempo and time signature will be in all of that. So let's try that first. Okay, first I figured I'd show you guys the computer I'm using. It's a PC and uh, I built this actually a couple months ago uh, and I didn't do a video about it, uh, even though I probably should have, because it's pretty cool. But I've been kind of moving away from the, you know, kind of computer type stuff on my channel, so that's why I didn't do it. But uh, just to give you the specs behind it real quick, it's a Ryzen 3700X CPU with a uh, NVIDIA 1660 Ti video card, uh, 32 gigabytes RAM, and about, uh, let's see, one, uh, well, there's one gigabyte uh, SSD and then a 256 gigabyte SSD in it as well. And uh, that about covers that, I guess. And then, let's see, using my SSL2 audio interface, Akai MPK Mini uh, MIDI controller. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use that just yet. And I also have, over here, a second audio interface, which I still use quite a bit, which is the Alesis IO4, and it's right here on my drums. And I have a long uh, USB cable that reaches back to the PC uh, for that. And then I can also use this as a MIDI interface as well. So, yeah. So that's what I have. And I have several mics here, but we'll get into those later. Uh, but, yeah. All right. So I think I did decide to go with Reaper this time. And uh, let's... Uh, I don't know. I've been doing a lot of odd time signatures lately. Like, you know, 7-4 and 5-4 and things like that. So maybe I'll make this one a little bit uh, more normal sounding. Let's do 6-8. Uh, I enjoy that temp that time signature, so I'm going to do a 6-8 time, so I'll just put that in the BPM here. I'm not really sure what speed to make this thing. Uh, right now it's at 120. No, I always... You, you kind of want to change it from, I don't know, every DAW defaults to 120 just about, and like you always want to change it like psychologically just because you don't want to leave anything on the default. At least that's how I am. Uh, but you don't have to, obviously. I mean, 120 is a perfectly good tempo to record at but i don't know what should i do let's do 150 let's make this one a little more upbeat so 150 but it's going to be a si in 6 8 so okay so we're going to go with that now i need to put some strings on my guitar with the new strings the acoustic strings that i have on there right now are like probably two years old and they sound horrible and feel horrible so i'm going to change those out and then I'll try to think of something on guitar. All right, here's my acoustic guitar. It is a very inexpensive Rogue RA90, I think is what it's called. I made a video on this a while back. It's a good guitar for being like 70 bucks. Uh, but yeah, like I said, the strings are really old. So I'm gonna put on these Elixir Nano Webs. These are extra light gauge, 10 to 47, which is very light for an acoustic guitar. But I am doing that on purpose because the older I get, the more I hate playing heavy gauge strings. 
I like it to be easy, so I'm gonna put these on there. Oh, I just noticed this little crack here in the body of my guitar. Uh, so maybe these aren't so great, but I mean, they are 70 bucks, but it does seem to be still working okay. Well, at least I thought it was. I haven't put the new strings on yet, but we'll see. But yeah, a little crack right there. Poo. Probably gonna have to buy a new acoustic guitar now. All right, so I got the acoustic guitar all hooked up and plugged in, and I started to try to come up with some parts, but I quickly realized that this thing kind of feels horrible. Uh, I think because of the bridge, this crack in the body, and there's quite a bit of bulging going on below the bridge here, and then it's sinking quite a bit here, and it's just not making it very enjoyable to play, and I'm just ha kind of having a hard time coming up with anything uh, that I like uh, that I can play easily. So I'm going to switch over to my electric and uh, go with that. It's too bad about this thing. I actually really did like this guitar for the short period of time that it lasted. I'm going to have to update my review uh, so people don't buy it <laughs> because I originally gave it a really good review, but I'm, you know, well, I don't know. A year for $70, uh, I guess that's okay. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to hook up my electric and we'll go with that. All right, I got my electric guitar hooked up, and today I'm actually going to be using this. Uh, it's a new device I have here. This is by a company called Flama Innovation, and they sent me this uh, guitar multi-effects unit, and I'm just plugging my electric directly into that and going into my SL2 interface. And uh, for the Flama, the Flama FX100, I'll do a full review on this uh, pretty soon because it's pretty cool. You can do software editing on the computer on it, and it uh, has all kinds of features, but we'll get into that in a different video. But that's what I'm going to be using today for my guitar sounds. All right, I've been playing around with something here, and I think I came up with a few parts. So I'm going to go ahead and record it and uh, hopefully make it through it without screwing up too much. <laughs> ah, forgot to tune. All right, I got a few guitar parts laid down, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's pretty interesting sounding. Uh, it took me a little while, but uh, <laughs> I think I am going to add some synths. I'm not really sure what yet, but let me just play you guys a section of this. Can you hear that? trippy Pink Floyd type thing. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to mess around with some synths and we'll see what I can do. Alright, I got some synth parts that I like. Now I'm going to do some fretless bass. And I had to close my window. It got super hot. So that's why the lighting's a little bit different. Anyway, I think I have something pretty much worked out. Let me just go ahead and try to record it. Let's see how it goes. All right, so I got guitar, bass, and keyboards all added, so now all there's left to do is drums. I'm not gonna do vocals, this is gonna be an instrumental song. Uh, so I'm going to hook up 
my electronic drum kit and uh, put some drums on here. Okay, so now on to the mixing part. This is the fun part. Well, it's all fun, but uh, I like mixing. So, okay, so I did a few things uh, as I was recording, as I usually do. So I'll just, first I'm going to go through what I did already, and then uh, we'll talk about what I'm going to do to finish it off. So first off on the bass, um, since I prayed, played, prayed, since I played fretless bass, um, I actually put an auto tune on here <laughs> because my intonation isn't so great on fretless. I mean, it's okay. It doesn't sound terrible without it, 
but you know if i can clean it up why not so i went ahead and did that and it's just the the reaper built-in uh pitch correction which you can see working right here and it does an excellent job it really really works good so i used that and then i also uh put some compression on here i use the 1175 compressor uh four to one compression uh turn the attack down to 20 milliseconds and the threshold to minus 12.9 db and uh that one sounds pretty good to me on the bass on the fretless so i can just solo it for you so you can hear it And also there was some chorus on the bass as well, because I ran it through the FX100 uh, as well as the same thing I did on the guitar, basically, just with a different patch. Okay, so what I really want to work on here now are the drums. So let's go ahead and solo the drums. Oh, also, let's turn off. What I do here sometimes is I'll put a limiter on the master, but I don't always leave it on. I, I'm going to turn that off for now. And the reason is, is you don't want to be like pushing too far into the, the limiter on your master as you're mixing. You want some headroom. Okay, so what I really want to start to work on here are the drums. So what I'm going to do first, since I have two tracks of drums, basically two uh, left and right. And these are all multiple takes that I did. But the last take I thought was good, so I'm going to work with that one which is the one that's yellow, but I don't have to do anything there. That's all good. So what I'm going to do, though, is actually create a new track and put that on the top. And then I'm going to drag these two drum tracks into that track. And what that does, that creates a group. So I can basically edit them both together um, or add effects and stuff like that both together. So let's go ahead and solo this and put some stuff on here. So... Usually what I like to do on electronic drums especially is first give them a little bit of overdrive just to make them a little bit more more lively. So I'm not really sure which, which one I'm going to use just yet. Let's see what all is available here. I've been doing more in Ableton lately than uh, Reaper. All right, let's just stop that for now. I have a lot of waves. Actually, there might be something here. No. All right, let's just look at all plugins. Distortion, DX distortion. That might be all right. Let's see how it is. This is actually a Vegas plugin, but this might work. So let's play it. Just like a little bit, not too much. I'm not sure how much I like this one though. Eh, maybe, eh, it's a little bit too fuzzy. All right, let's use something else. I mean, it does make it hotter, but let's use something else. It's a little bit too much. See, in Ableton, I always use the, the tube warmth like plugin that is part of Ableton, but I don't have that here. There's probably a Reaper plugin. Let's look under Kukos or Kakos or however you say it. Delay, gate. All right, this is gonna take forever like this. Let's do some searching. Tube, anything? Amplitude, no. How about, foot? no, overdrive? I think I searched that one already. Distortion, JS distortion, okay. That's probably a good one. Let's try this. Yeah, that's pretty good. Stereo though. And it's a little bit too much. Let's turn it down. Let's 
still a bit much. See, that's just like a little bit. That's better. Okay, now let's add some... Channel strip. Oh, not that. Still a little too distorted. Take out some of the high end. Give a little mo low mids. That's too much. Might not need this distortion. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need it. I mean, that sounded pretty good already. I might not need to mess with it too much. I'm already pretty happy with that guitar tone. I really don't think I need to do any EQ on there at all. I have it panned a little bit to the left and the lead a little bit to the right. Then the distorted guitar and the chorus that comes in here in a second is also to the right. This one I think I could use a little EQ. So let's go in here. Let's use this G channel again. I want some more low mids. A little less highs, a little more high mids. Go back. Try to get everything out of the red. It's okay if these go in the red a little bit. It doesn't really hurt anything. Okay, that sounded pretty good. Fairlight patch I have here. Oh, I didn't even show you guys what I used. 
This is the Darklight plugin, which is a Fairlight CMI emulator that you can get from UVI. And then in this one, I have, this is also from UVI, this is the Digital Sensations plugin. And it has a lot of different uh, vintage digital synths that it emulates. So those are the two synths that I'm using. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the levels here. Let's start putting some glue on this mix. And what I mean by that is first off, we have the limiter here. So I'm gonna move this down one. I think. Why oh, don't let me move it? Maybe I have to be stopped, maybe. Oh, all right. Uh, maybe it has to be another plug-in here first. So let's go ahead and add what I want to do is the SSL compressor, which is a amazing sounding compressor. And then I want the, yeah, there we go. Maximizer, maximizer to be after that. And I already know what settings I like on this compressor. So I put the release to auto and I usually put the threshold down a little bit and then the makeup gain up a little bit. And then that should be good. Let's hear what that sounds like. Drums EQ, I feel like, could be a little different still. That's those high mids I took out. Let's put those back. If you really want to hear what frequency you're adjusting, what you do is just turn it up, and then you can adjust the frequency here to get a better idea of what you want. So I want kind of around this mid-range, just to give it a little more pop. That's pretty good. Maybe a bit more low, probably around the 100 hertz. The reason why it's cutting out like that is because I'm using the Windows audio driver so you guys can hear my voice at the same time. Uh, if I were using my SSL driver, I wouldn't be doing that. Okay, so now let's play a bit, play around a bit rather with the maximizer. That sounded pretty darn nice. So this maximizer plugin I'm using here is also from Waves. I have a lot of Waves plugins. Um, they have they've had a lot of really good deals uh, during this whole uh, pandemic thing. A lot of coupons and stuff like that so i've just been picking up a lot of really really great plugins i mean i've had the l1 ultra maximizer it's a great limiter and maximizer it's a way to get your your mixes really hot and loud sounding but still have some dynamics and the ssl uh suite i picked up which is that's where this compressor comes from as well as that eq and well channel strip that i put on the drums here we don't need this distortion so let's get rid of that uh, so, yeah, I ended up not using any distortion this time on the drums, which is fine. So let's hear this a little bit. I want to hear the whole thing through, and uh, I'll probably edit some of this out so you guys don't have to hear it all, but let me just check it. All right, I've listened to it a few times now, and I think I have it just about where I like it. So let me close all these plugins here. 
and uh Yeah, so little changes I did. I just panned the DS90S, uh, which is one of the synths, a little bit to the right because the main rhythm guitar is panned a little bit to the left, and those two kind of come in early on in the song, so it gives it a nice balance between left and right. And you'll notice that I really didn't add that many plugins. Um, I only have, let's see, on the actual individual tracks, one, well, this tuner is actually just for tuning the guitar, so that one doesn't even count. Let's get rid of that. Well, I don't have to get rid of it. So, ah. One, two, three. And the synths don't count either. So one, two, three, four plugins on the entire mix, except for the master plugins. And then I have two more there. So it's not that much. You know, like if you get your sounds good before you press record, then there's a lot less work to do in the mix. And that's usually how I like to do it. I like to get a guitar tone that, I think sounds good already and actually i used it like i said before i used this fx 100 i don't know if you can see that in the webcam but uh this thing and i dialed in a couple sounds on there that i liked and the clean one has some flange and some uh compression and some eq on it and then the distorted one is like some chorus and some eq and distortion and uh, yeah, and the bass I did through there as well. The bass, I didn't use any kind of amp modeling, but I did put some compression and some chorus on it. So that was all done within the FX100 for the, the gu guitars and the basses. And then the, the synth plugins already have, you know, there's no need to put any effects on those. They already sound crazy. So really it was just balancing out a little bit of EQ and putting a little bit of compression and a little bit of limiting on the output but i don't push it like crazy because you want to leave yourself a little bit of headroom for mastering uh so i do you know i push it up there kind of high but it's not too bad uh so anyway let's go ahead and mix this down so i'm gonna go here to render and then i don't know if this is going to be a demonic sweater song or a Minnesota song it kind of sounds like it could be either um but i'm thinking maybe demonic sweaters because it kind of fits in this group of songs that I'm making uh, for new demonic sweater stuff. So maybe that's what I'll do, but I don't know yet. Maybe Minnesota too, it could fit in there. So I just repeated exactly what I said before. Uh, so let's get and browse. The reason why I'm saying that, because I don't know where to put it. I don't know where to, to bounce it to, but uh, let's go ahead in here. I don't understand why it doesn't show my data drive in that list, but anyway, recordings and then mixes, and then I'm gonna put it in demonic sweaters for now. And I don't even have a folder for this stuff yet, but that's okay. Just put it there. And I want it to be a WAV file. And yeah, do I want it to be 24-bit? Well, if I, the advantage of having 24-bit uh, for mastering is it does give you a little more headroom. Uh, but I think the rest of mine are already in 16-bit. So I probably am just going to or bounce it at 16-bit. I can always come back in and get a 24-bit master if I want or mix rather and that's that so finished up all right that's going to be all for today's video uh, I left out the mastering part of the song just because of time uh, this thing has been going on very long and I still have to do the editing of the actual video and right now it's 6 37 p.m and I started at 11 a.m so yeah, about seven hours. Is that seven hours? Yeah, about almost seven hours of work. I uh, took a little break for lunch there, but yeah, I think it came out really good. I may go back in and remix it, you know, just to polish things up before I do the final release. But I think, uh, you know, for the purpose of this video, uh, that was pretty good. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload new content. And if you want to listen to my music, uh, you know, there's a lot of music on Spotify and Apple Music. You can just search Demonic Sweaters on any of those and you'll find me. You can also check out my record label, which is anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys really soon. Later.